So our friend Gonzalo Lira, Coach Red Pill, has very much more like very much probably been captured. We can uh, conclude this based on uh, the, what, what the officials of the Ukrainian side are appearing to announce. And, you know, I can confirm that this is a you, you can see objectively that this is an officer of the Ukrainian side since uh, they are trans and we know what we know which side the LGBT community has taken in this conflict and this person seems to indicate tries to dog whistle or doesn't say it very clearly but indicates that Gonzalo Lira has been captured with his so-called attempts at asylum in Hungary. There's a reason you haven't heard from Gonzalo Lira yet with his so-called attempts at asylum in Hungary. It's because the state security services, better known as the SBU, are some of the most talented and focused law enforcement agents across the globe. And in doing so, they knew where Gonzalo Lira was. There's a reason you have This is a fucking nightmare. I mean... That's how hell feels. People were making jokes on my tweet about this. They were saying, you want to know what the future looks like? Uh, <laughs> a trans boot stumping onto your face uh, forever. Uh, no, no, it, it is not a joke, Esferia. Uh, <laughs> they are kind of saying... Uh, you know, if you do like Gonzalo Lira, you're going to get in trouble. Our people are very competent. Uh, you didn't need to be competent to catch Gonzalo Lira because he, did, he decided to go in the open way. He decided to show himself at the border with Hungary. That's what he explains in his video. Uh, show himself at the border of Hungary and just hope that somehow he wouldn't come up in a computer system. He showed himself to the Ukrainian authority. So it's not like you've traced him and you've detected him with some satellite tracking or whatever. Gonzalo Lira has decided to uh, try the clean way to enter Hungary. Not such a wise choice, if you want my opinion. But when you're in these situations, sometimes there is no perfect choice. Uh, people were pointing out, why didn't you go to the front line, Coach? And Coach has a, an explanation on this. He says, the front line is too dangerous. You need basically a soldier to accompany you. And he couldn't find someone of that level of competence that would take him through the front line. And he says, the whole 1,000 kilometer long of the front line is all under heavy surveillance. And... It's not as easy as just walking in the forest. They have cameras. They will track you. He said he didn't want to go to the European side, like Poland or whatever other countries he could have gone to, uh, because that would uh, put him... There's too much of a strength. There's too much of a strong alliance binding these countries with Ukraine and the potential... Uh, calls of Ukraine for him to be repatriated. If I were him, I would have considered Moldova. I would have considered Moldova in the Transnistrian region. Uh, that might have been the best bet to make. Uh, but I, he didn't explain in the video why he didn't go there. But in the, the Transnistria region is a very low population uh, kind of uh, revolted part of uh, Moldova. And Moldova is a poor country. They wouldn't have much capacities to... And from there, from the Trans Transnistria uh, region, uh, he could have found a boat, perhaps, an access to get to a boat that would have led him into Russian territory. And from there, he could have found safety. But, uh, you know, uh, I'm not criticizing because when you are in those situations of high nervousness, Coach Red Pill has been oppressed for his speech and political thought. Coach Red Pill has been tortured in jail. He has been tortured with uh, 
punches, uh, heavy punches that left heavy damage on his chest. He has been tortured by toothpick, scratching the whites of the eye. Uh, with the with the intent uh, with the intent of extorting him to force him to give money to the prisoner and the SBU collaborators and the guard collaborators that uh, that they knew he had one hundred forty thousand in his PayPal account. They had uh, they had monitored something, some connections of him to the internet, and somehow they knew that there was 140k in his PayPal account, but of course, PayPal wouldn't uh, give them the money, and so they decided to torture Coach Red Pill, who is currently a political prisoner. He hasn't committed any crime, and they have decided to torture him for half of that sum. That sum had been accumulated by Coach Red Pill from his Patreon, uh, from his Patreon donors across the years, because Coach Red Pill didn't need that money because he's relatively rich and so he had let this paypal uh, accumulation of 140k uh, I, I knew i knew how for coach his patreon was very important but it wasn't the money for him it was the love it was the love of people and it was the he was proud to have achieved to have mounted this base of support that were willing to show their support to him by throwing money, but it wasn't the money he was after. To him, it was heartwarming. Every dollar that could build into his Patreon account. And so they, they successfully extorted him of 70k. Uh, it's impossible, by the way, for a, for a prisoner out of nowhere in Ukraine to know that you have 140k in your PayPal account, and therefore to know that asking for half of it is li very likely to lead to success. So I think it's evidence that there has been heavy corruption. There has been corruption uh, at the highest levels of their intelligence uh, system, and they have ordered these guards, the, these uh, prisoners and guards, to both uh, torture Coach Red Pill and turn a blind eye and a blind eye to these events of torture. It shows you the state of Ukraine. I mean, we're talking about a country that claims to be uh, the forefront of European values in the fight against a tyrannical Vladimir Putin in Russia. Uh, fuck this bullshit. Ukraine is the most corrupt country in the white world, probably one of the most corrupt countries in the world, and it's absolutely ridiculous to be sending any money there. Uh, it is a shithole country, and it shows its shithole status in what they are doing here with a political tinker. Absolute shithole status. Now... Richard Spencer, which I, I think it's a bad take. Uh, Richard Spencer says, Gonzalo, you have no right to enter a country as a guest and then proceed to spread demoralization and enemy propaganda while it is being invaded. The fact that you're alive demonstrates that Zelensky is a generous man, hardly the gangster you make him out to be. Well... Uh, I said to uh, Richard on this, I get what you, where you're coming from, Richard. I mean, this has been expressed uh, across the years. Richard, Richard has been very stable on this, uh, this take against free speech. He's been saying it in, ver in very different situations. Uh, he's been maintaining the idea that basically might is right, even in the domain of speech. Uh, I said to him, I get where you're coming from, Richard, but could you not acknowledge that there is value here in at least providing a public demonstration of the dissonant views of those who say that Ukraine is the side of democracy against tyranny? And yet, where things like this happen, uh, I think it's the value of what Coach is making here. He's showing that if you extend the front of Europe, 
toward anything, J just out of hate for the Russians or out of geopolitical consideration, if you extend the European slash American slash NATO empire to points where it doesn't belong, you will end up siding with people who cannot be said to be sharing the values that are at the very root of your civilization, at least the good side of Europe, uh, the good side of America, uh, what led to their success, values of freedom, liberalism, and free thought. Dino Lugovic says, if you are a journalist and not in detention or jail, you belong on the shopping channel, change your job title to whore. Wow, that is uh, for, for a $3 super chat, Dino Lugovic, you're going very hard on me. Because here I am, a journalist, not in a detention. And so, do I belong to the shopping channel? Let me know on the regular chat if you agree with Dino Lugovic. I will immediately submit my resume to, uh, to the shopping channel. So Gonzalo Lira, I think he chose he chose uh, to make a bold move in a situation where he knows he's not going to get due process. He knows it's arbitrary rule under martial law, and he knows that this whole circus of a trial isn't even worth going through and hoping anything. He knows he's going to end in a labor camp for enough years that he will die there. And so he decided to make a bold move. Not bold enough in my view. In my view, the technique here would have been to go in the underwoods at night, uh, be stealthy, uh, and try to cross in the Transnistria region rather than the Hungary region. But even if... Uh, even if uh, he had chosen Hungary to just show up at the big door, uh, that wasn't a project that had much chance to work. I mean, to basically hope for a bureaucratic error. I mean, to the credit of, of Coach Red Pill here, we're talking about Ukraine. <laughs> we're talking about Ukraine but, you know, backed up by American intelligence, American budget, and Elon Musk's Starlink satellite. So it's weird because the, the U Ukraine on their own, I wouldn't put it them, uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't put them above, uh, you know, not making a bureaucratic error that would have left a door open for coach to leave. Uh, but the combination of the paranoia of the war, the controls on immigration, uh, and, and presumably the, the, they got so much funding that they must be somehow equipped in computer systems, uh, it was very unlikely that he would make it through the official channel. But that's the way Coach decided to go. He decided to... I, I would have just... You have to force your way through. You, you can't stop at the post. You either have to go full John Rambo in the woods, and understandably, and yes, I understand the point of a uh, coach that uh, there are cameras everywhere, but you have to take this into account. There are cameras, all right, but you are at a certain distance from where they catch you. So you have to win that, you, you have to play on that distance. It takes a certain time for them to get to you. And the more you go into uh, woody areas, the more it's hard for them to get off the road to get to you. And you have to use that time advantage to your side. I would have either dri driven at 200 kilometers an hour through the post and just try to make it physically into Hungary. Or I would, I would have gone the foresty way, John Rambo style, uh, like hanging from the trees and ready to jump onto SBU agents uh, and setting traps for SBU agents. That is what I would have gone for. But Coach Red Pitt has his own style. And, you know, not everyone is like me. I've been spending my childhood setting traps in the wood 
for not traps for animals, human traps. I've been when I was a kid. I mean, it was insane. I wanted to protect my wood, my forest. I was setting up these insane traps. I mean, there would be a whole tree. A whole tree could fall onto you and kill you. At some point, I walked into one of my own traps. It was so well set up. I had taken the time to fully chop a big, big tree. I had. I had laid the tree so that it would rest as if, as if it was still planted. And then I had attached a little rope. And in a place that I expected people to pass, I had attached a little rope to the tree and to the other tree so that when you were stepping on that rope or you were lifting that rope with your feet, the tree would do BAM! And I got that tree right in the face. I was something like nine years old. That's where I realized... Uh, the power of my traps, the danger uh, of the material I was working with. Um, but yeah, th that's the kind of thing you need to go for. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm happy that Coach, you know, lived to do his attempt. I believe he is now captured. He's going to go through a whole process that's meant to demoralize him and to not give him due process. And yes, I agree with his appeal at the end of this video. We should make a fuss about it. That's why I went to prison. And that's why if I'm arrested again, I will die in prison. So I ask you, please, as many people as possible, the American State Department knows exactly who I am and the situation I'm currently involved in. And they know the fate that awaits me. They know it. You know, they have that saying that, uh, uh, that I, I forget the wording exactly. You know, I'm a little stressed out as you can imagine, but they have that saying that uh, uh, people are fundamentally good, but for evil to triumph, all you need is the uh, indifference of good people. Please don't be indifferent to my fate. I ask you this very humbly. Please recognize that, well, the literal death that awaits me if this is, doesn't work out. Understand what's going on. All right, so those are the last words, the last three words of Coach Red Pill. Uh, he may never be able to speak to us again. Uh, he, may, he may be killed by the SBU. He may be a prisoner forever in a way that doesn't allow communication. So it's great, to, it's great that he had this motorcycle ride. Uh, it's sad that it didn't work. Uh, Rodrigo Sid says, I mean, if they kill him in prison, at least he will know he was right. Yeah, exactly. I totally have respect for people choosing their, their manner of death. And CRP has chosen his manner of death. He has chosen to make a point with his death. And compare this with most people. I mean, most people die in their urine in some old uh, people's auspices. You know, it's not like you're not going to do anything amazing with your death. And here we have Coach Red Pill doing something amazing with his death. So respect to him. And yes, Ukraine is not a, uh, a, light, a light bringer of democracy, nor is it a country we should ever collaborate with, nor is it a country we should ever uh, trust on anything. 